Hello, in this SFML tutorial, we're going to be covering how to play and record audio. When we say audio, we include sound effects and music files. So a, a quick overview of what the difference is, you probably already know. If you don't, sound effect is just something small. It's usually something that plays for like half a second or a second, like a gunshot or maybe a knock like that. And a music file will be something like the background music. You probably only have one of them playing at any given time. And that would be to, let's say, set the mood and atmosphere of the game. So let's get down to it. I've already got some sound files in my resources folder, which is called res, and got a folder called audio, got a collide and a music file like so. You can download these off the GitHub page. There'll be a link in the description and all the source code will be there as well as usual. So my audio stuff is already there. If you're on Mac, you might need to copy these over to your release directory where your executable is, or if you just set Xcode up so it copies you over automatically. On Windows, using Visual Studio or any other ID, probably won't have any issue. If you have any questions about that, just feel free to ask. So. First of all, to play a audio file, we're going to deal with the sound effect first. You need to create a sound buffer which will load your file. So to do that, you do SF sound. And you might be thinking, it's not appearing. Why is sound buffer not appearing? And the reason for that is we need to include the SFML audio header. And now if we do SF sound buffer, all of this sound stuff appear. So just make sure you include the audio file. That's a common mistake that a lot of people do. I'm gonna call this buffer. And what we're gonna do now is just load a file into the buffer. So we're gonna enclose it in an if statement that will allow us to check if it's successfully loaded. So if not loaded, then we'll just do something in this tutorial. We'll just print out something to the log saying it hasn't loaded, but you might wanna quit the application or try and load an alternative file do dot load from file there's also load from memory and stream that's a bit more advanced and, and if you're familiar with loading from memory in general you'll know how to get your head around that so for this you just pass in the location so this is relative to this file so we've got the main file so you need to go into res audio then play our collide.wav file so it's res forward slash audio forward slash collide.wav and in here, if he hasn't successfully loaded it, we're just gonna say error loading sound effect. And we're gonna do STD and line. And the next thing we need to do, because we've loaded the audio file, the buffer isn't what you use to play it. That's just to load it. You need to assign this audio file to a particular sound file, sound object. You do that by doing SF sound. I want to call it sound. And to set a buffer, you just do sound.set buffer. And for this, specify the buffer, which is called buffer. And to play it, you just do sound.play. And what I'm going to do, I've already got a key released event. So whenever any key is released, we'll play our sound effect. So I'm going to do sound dot play and now if i run this we'll be able to play the sound so i'm just going to turn up the volume on my speakers to quite loud so if it's a little too loud just bear with me and you should be able to hear this so i'm just going to click the space bar but it doesn't matter what key you press because it's the just a general key released event as you can see, we can hear the colloid sound effect. So there's a bunch of other methods as well, which we're not really going to be covering because they're pretty self-explanatory and easy to use. So if I do sound dot, you can pause it. For this, the audio file is so small for this sound effect that you probably wouldn't want to pause it, but that will just pause it, reset in buffer. If you want to set the buffer again, if you want the audio file to constantly keep looping after you've played it once, you can just pass in true for that. And if you want to disable that, just do false. By default, it is disabled. You can set a playing offset. So if you want the audio file to start half a second in, you can just specify a time into here. We'll be covering 
the time system within SF amount in a separate video. And let's say if you want to stop it, you can stop it as well. But stopping and pausing is pretty hard with this sound file because it's very short. And you can also get all of the different stuff for anything that you've set. You can also set stuff like attenuation, volume as well. So if you want to make it quieter, louder, the pitch, all of that good stuff. So that's how you play a sound effect, very simple. Now let's show you how to play a sound or a music file. To do that, you do FF music, not mouse, music, I wanna call it music. You don't use a sound buffer for this. So you don't load it into your memory. You actually play it from the sound file itself. And this is generally used for longer files. So to do this, you need to open from file. So we're just gonna do something similar. So we're gonna check if it successfully opens. So if not music, dot open from file. And for this, you need to specify the path, which is rev for slash audio for slash main music dot og. And if this is unsuccessful, I'll copy and paste this error message and we'll just change this to say error loading music file so error loading music file and now to actually play our music file we would just do music.play but what we're going to do is let's comment this out so this doesn't get in the way we're going to add some key release events and check if a particular key is pressed so i'm going to check if sf keyboard key p is pressed and if this equals the event dot key code then it is pressed you can look at the event system video tutorial which covers all of the key stuff and keyboard events mouse events joystick events window events and all of that good stuff so in here we're going to do music dot play but you could play it after you've loaded it and you might want to do that you might not but this is just a great way of just showing you how to all the difference between playing it pausing it and all of that other stuff so if i do else if if i press the s key i'm going to stop the audio file so this is just the stop method and then finally if i press the f key i'm going to pause it so if i run this now We get nothing in the console, so it looks like it successfully opened the file. At the moment, it's not playing because I haven't clicked P. If I click P, it's successfully playing. I've just turned down the volume manually myself, but I'm just gonna click the S button after I increase the volume. And that has now stopped playing it. So if I click play again, stop it starts it from the start because obviously we stopped it but if we play it and then pause it so i've just clicked the f key which is the pause key that i've assigned to the pause functionality if i click p again which is play it continues from the same place so that's how you use music files. But if you were to click play, the, the or you, you were to call the play method while it's still playing, it'll restart. So just listen to this. Then I click the play button while it was still playing. So it stops it and then it starts it again. If I press play again, it does the same thing. So I've just stopped it manually myself. And same as before, music has a bunch of methods, stuff like get duration, you can set attenuation, set looping, you can set an offset as well, set volume, you can get all of those, set pitch, pretty self-explanatory, and I'll recommend experimenting with them as an extra task. So that's loading and playing audio files in the form of a sound effect and a music file. But now we're gonna show you how to actually record a piece of audio using your recording device. So to do that, you need to create a sound buffer recorder. But before you even do that, we wanna check if a sound buffer recorder is available. So we're gonna do if 
not SF sound buffer recorder is available if it's not available then we are simply just going to copy and paste this into here and we're gonna say no recording device found I know the recording device that is working and that is connected which is the one I'm using right now I actually hope it's connected otherwise well you can't obviously hear this you're just gonna have blank so now assuming it is successful you probably want to do something else in the end maybe let the user know visually or maybe even quit the application because maybe it's a requirement that you have a recording device but a console out is fine for us and to record audio you need to first create a sound buffer recorder so sf sound buffer recorder i'm going to call it recorder and all you have to do is do recorder dot start and you can start here on a key press if you want but i'm going to start here as soon as the application launches and we also need a sound buffer similar to what we had in here and this sound buffer will be used to save the file so i'm going to call this recording buffer you could reuse the other one but that will overwrite the file that has been loaded into there so now that we've created the recording buffer to stop it it's pretty simple i want to stop it after we quit the application so i'm going to do recorder dot stop So this has stopped the recording, but now we need to assign the file to the recording buffer, which can actually save out. So we do recording buffer, or whatever your buffer is called, equal to recorder dot get buffer, like so. And now we just need to do recording buffer dot save to file. And we are saving it as recording.arg. So if we save that, and now if we run it, okay, so let's have a look to see if there's any errors. Nope, so it looks like there's a device available and it has been recording everything that I'm saying so far. And to stop it, if I just close down the application, now let's play the audio file. So if I go to my directory, you might be thinking, can't see it. And the reason is, this is where your code is. This is where your project is. You need to go to where your executable resides. For me, in on Mac, it's in a separate directory altogether. But on Windows, there'll be like a debug or a release folder, and it will be in that file folder. So for me, if I go show in Finder, mine is here, recording.arg. And if I were to just open this in VLC. Okay, so let's have a look to see if there's any errors. Nope, so it looks like there's a device available and it has been recording everything that I'm saying so far. And to stop it, if I just... There we go. So that has recorded the audio file that I or recorded what I was just saying. So that's how you record audio using your mic. That's pretty cool. And the last thing we're gonna show you is how you can actually query and check how many recording devices are available and choose a different one. So to do that, you need to do std vector and the type is gonna be std string and I'm gonna call this available devices this is going to be equal to the sound recorder get available devices and what we're going to simply do is just loop over all of this to see what devices are available so int i equals zero while i is less than available devices dot size i plus plus and now we're just going to do a C out, which is just going to be available devices dot at. So at this particular index, which is I at the moment. And STD and line. 
So now if we run this, so it's still recording, we don't care about that. It's printed out Samsung Go Mic. I've only got one input device connected, so it's printing out that particular one. And if you wanted to explicitly set the audio device, I have only got one, but this principle would still apply. You do std string input device. I'm just gonna close this down. So input device, and this is equal to available devices and you just need to access a particular device, so zero being the first one, so this would access the Samsung Go mic, but maybe if I had the Samsung Go mic connected and then the second one at index one was the Blue Yeti mic, if I put zero in there, it would choose the Samsung Go mic, if I put one in there, which is the second index, it would choose the Blue Yeti mic. And to use this, you just need to do sf sound buffer recorder. I know we've already got one, but I'm just going to show you how to do it with a new one. I'm going to call it recorder 2. And all you do is set the device. We're going to enclose it within an if statement to make sure we successfully set it. So if not recorder 2.set device. And in here, you just specify the input device string that we created up there. So if it has failed, then we're just going to say std cout error problem setting recording device std end line. So if we run this, we shouldn't get any errors at all because it's successfully set the device. So that's how you play sound effects, music files, record audio, change your recording devices. So if you've got any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description along with the GitHub link, which will have the audio files and the source code from every video in this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.